So in the last episode, we looked at how we could get a list of following users and came up with our followed user type, which maps a user ID to a user that we may or may not have fetched yet. We're decoding that successfully, as we can see in the console. And today our job is to actually make a request to fetch those users. The goal here being that we'll know the IDs of the users that someone's following. We can fetch them and then list them in the home page. Back in our code, the first thing we can do is just remove this debug. I don't think we need it anymore. I think we're confident that everything is working correctly. And now what we need to do is write the code that's going to take one of these user IDs and actually replace it with a full user. So we have this function called fetch user information. And that fetches the information for the currently logged in user. I actually think here fetch user information is going to get confusing as a name. Now we are also fetching data for other users. So I'm going to find fetch user information. And we can see everywhere we're using it is just to fetch the logged in user. So we're going to change this to be fetch authenticated user. And if I go here, I think if I hit that one, I can replace all the instances. So it's just a little bit of tidying up there to rename that function. So now we can write another function called fetch user. And it's going to create the token. And it needs a token because we're authenticating our requests. And then it's going to need the actual user ID to fetch, which will be a user ID. And it's going to return a command of type message. So fetch user is going to create a token. And we'll destructure the token there to be token. It's going to take a user ID. And again, we can destructure user ID to user ID to just pull out the string that we actually care about. And for now, let's just return a command.none and hit save. And Elm format handily gets rid of those brackets. I was a bit bracket crazy there. And I'm going to copy the code from fetch authenticated user. You might be thinking there's going to be a bunch of duplication here. And there is. We're going to refactor that out at a later date. But for now, we know that the URL we need to request is API slash users, then slash this user ID. So we can say, wrap this in a bracket, API slash users plus plus user ID. And Elm, it's plus plus to concatenate strings together. Plus is just for mathematical operations. And with the header X token, token is good. We've expect JSON me decoder. Now, if we take a look at the me decoder, it's actually going to work fine because we're, we're just generally passing users and understanding the user's data. So what I'm going to do in a minute is we'll rename the me decoder to just be user decoder. But for now, it's fine. And an HTTP builder.send to make the request. Handle fetch user request isn't quite what we want because we're now going to want a different message to be generated. Handle fetch user request sends the fetched user message. But again, those, those messages are relating to the current logged in user. So what we need to do is do a bit of data renaming before we can uh, make things clearer. So for now, I'm just going to comment fetch user out. And let's rename some of these other functions. So handle fetch user request. That probably needs to change to be, uh, again, let's do handle authenticated user request. Again, this isn't a great name, though, because this could be read as actually just handling a request for a user who is authenticated. So we're going to right click here, go change all occurrences. And let's change this to uh, handle fetching authenticated user request. So that's renamed all of those. And again, these messages aren't too great. Error fetching user could be a little bit uh, misleading. So let's take error fetching user. And we're going to uh, go in here and we'll replace this with error fetching authenticated user. So let's replace all of those. In fact, I need to find them first. So there's three places. Those all look right. And I'll replace all of those. And similarly, we have fetched user. I'm going to rename that fetched authenticated user. So let's see how many times that comes up. And of course, that's not found. That's fetched user there. And we need fetched authentic authenticated user there. Three times again. So let's just replace all of those. And you'll find renames like this are really easy to do in Elm, not only because any decent editor has a good find and replace, but because the compiler will catch if you miss a spot. So you can do this pretty confidently and make sure that everything is still working uh, very easily. So now going back to our fetch user function, uh, in fact, I'll do one more renaming. We've got this me decoder. Let's just change that to be user decoder. I'm pretty sure I missed one case there. Whoops, so that would be user decoder. So fetch user, when we send the request, let's do, let's change handle fetch user request be in fact, we're going to leave that name because that name actually does make sense. Given that the function is called fetch user, handle fetch user request makes sense. 
And this doesn't actually need the token. Remember, we only need the token because we're dealing with the currently authenticating user, but we don't need that anymore. So let's say handle fetch user request. It's going to get called with a result that could be HTTP.error or it could be a user. So let's handle fetch user request uh, will be the, let's just call it result. And remember, it has to return uh, a message. So again, we're going to go up here and do case result of. And again, for now in here, if there is an error, I'm just going to know up. It's not too clear to me right now in my head what we should do if we get an error fetching a user that someone's following. We should probably retry it or just show an error on the screen. So we'll leave it to do, and if I remember to do elm.js comments, we'll leave it to do, and we'll say show a nice error if we can't fetch a user. So if at this point we've got the user, what we need to do is update the list of followed users to put their user data into the right place. So we can say uh, fetched followed user and pass in that user. And this user has their ID attached, so we'll be able to pass that on uh, so we can use that ID to look them up. So let's save that. And we can't find that message, but other than that, this is all looking good. You might be thinking here that it's a bit weird to have a generic fetch user function, but its message be very specific to a bit of functionality we're building, in this case, following a user. You're right. You also might be thinking there's a lot of duplication between these HTTP requests. In a future video, we'll, we'll swing back around here and look at how we can tidy these up a bit and get rid of some of the duplication. But for now, I just want to focus on getting this feature working. So let's go into our message type and we're going to have a new message called fetched uh, followed user and that will be called with a user. Okay, so now we've got these, let's look at how we can actually start making a request to get the data for these users. So in the update function for of main.l, if we fetch an authenticated user, we now want to fetch all the users that they are following. And again, if you're thinking the API here is weird and this could get very bad, if a user is following a thousand people, we're gonna make a thousand requests. Yes, in real life, this API would probably let you take a big list of IDs or return them when you fetch users' data. I've actually created the API like this just to allow us to explore this problem a bit and show off some more of Elm. So don't worry too much about the fact that this is a, a funky API. It's kind of funky on purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace command.none here with a call to API. I'm going to call this fetch uh, followed users. And it's going to be fetch followed users for user. And it's going to take uh, the user that we just made the request to. And I'm just going to hit enter there so Elm format puts it on two line. So API module doesn't expose this function, so let's go and create this. So we'll say fetch followed users for user. So it's going to take a user and it's going to return a command of type message. So we'll say fetch followed users for user user equals. And again, for now, I'm just going to type command.none. And we need to go up to the top and we need to expose the fetch followed users for user function. So what we need to do here is we need to take the following list of, of users, so the IDs, we need to map over them and create a request for every single one of them. So I'm gonna say list.map, and it's going to get called in this case with the uh, followed user. And what we can do here is we can say case followed user of, so it's always gonna be a followed user, and it's always we need it to always have a user ID, of user ID. But we only need to make the request if they don't have the actual populated data yet. So we're going to have two cases, one where we don't have the user data and one where we do have the user data. So this will be just something. In the case that it's just something, we actually don't need to do anything. We just need to do command.none because we've already fetched them. In the case that it's nothing, that's when we need to make the request to fetch a user. So at this point, we can call fetch user and we're going to pass in the token, which we're actually going to need to pass into this function. Uh, and we're going to pass in the user ID, which we actually don't want to destructure. So I'm going to replace that with user ID, uh, because in here we need that. And that should kick off a request to fetch that user. I'm going to take all of this, this list.map, and this has now created a list of commands, and you can pass a list of commands into command.batch to batch them into one. So you can see Elm is moaning that we don't have a token, so let's make sure we pass a token in here and here. And in fact, we need to go back into main.elm and pass it in there as well. So let's go and look in the browser and we should see network requests happening for the user that we're following. And you can see we're getting an error here, a bit of a type mismatch. The argument is list followed user to list command message, but the pipe is piping to a function that expects list command message. This is a slightly confusing error message, but this comes about because list.map is expecting two arguments. 
the function to map and then the actual list. And I've only given it the format. So we actually need to do user.following here. And we'll pipe that into command.batch. Now, the way this has been formatted is a little confusing. So I'm actually going to swap this round. I'm going to say user.following. And we'll then pipe that into this map function and bring that up there. And then it gets piped into command.batch. That looks a little bit clearer now. What we could do is pull this out into a function if we wanted, but I'm going to leave it there for now. You can see we now get a function in main.elm that this case in our update doesn't have all possibilities dealt with. It needs fetched followed user. So let's go and just implement a dummy for that. So let's go into our update and we'll say fetched followed user user. And let's just no op for now. And of course, when I say let's no op, I just mean let's do model command.none. So if I refresh now, you'll see we're making a request to me. Remember, there's two of each because one of them is the cross origin options request. And you can see I'm following a user that ends in 624. And you'll see now we have a request for the user ending in 624. And we're fetching, in this case, Mali Collier's details from our API. So we're going to pause that video there just so we don't go on for too long and give ourselves a little break. In the next video, now we have this data, we'll look at populating the list of followed users that user has and showing them in our UI.